So I have found out a pretty useful resource, which automatically creates view models for your tools. And it's as simple as just dragging and dropping the script, which basically just handles everything for you. But as usual, leave a like and support support the channel, and you can also support me on Patreon, but let's get into the video. So there is this kind of an old dev forum post from May 2021 about the easy first person, which is a drag and drop first person view models. And shout out to Yellow for actually making this. Where here they are just saying that this system is basically for you, if you either don't have the programming knowledge to basically make a view model, and this is just about adding the script into the game and having the first person shooter view on the tools. And here are some video examples. So this is without the first person. And this is with the first person script. So overall there is more stuff to the script than just it making a view model out of the tool. You can also see that the gun has a sway as well as view bobbing and an additional stuff, for example like the whenever the person is landing. And there is also a comparison for R6, where again this is without the first person and this is with. So this is both compatible with R6 and R15, which is pretty neat. And you can also press on this link, which is going to take you to the easy first person test, which we are going to check out in a minute. But there is also a link to get the model, as well as the features, which is the mentioned R6 and R15 compatibility. It doesn't override animations. If your tool plays animations, they will still affect the view model arms as expected. It's also fully customizable. You can easily pick and choose which sway camera methods are applied. And there is the drag and drop functionality, which is just PNP or plug and play. Then all the code is commented, allowing you to see how the system works, so you can create your own FPS camera system. And I wish more developers did that. But anyways, it also automatically applies the view model system whenever you go into the first person view. Then you have the ability to customize the transparency of the view model arms. And it's also designed to interfere as little as possible with the pre-existing systems in your games. And then there is the open source projects and then the portfolio of this person. So that's the dev forum post and let's see the game example. And then we are going to move into studio. So here I am in the easy first person test. And let's just see how it's going to work if I just go into the first person. So I'm not really seeing any changes, except basically my arm and the view bobbing and the landing. One thing I wish that this script did is that it wouldn't move your mouse downwards and basically just keep it in that position. If I just place it on the horizon and basically just jump, you can see that it moved my camera a little bit downwards, but it's still pretty nice. But let me actually just pull out some of the tools, like the knife, and just go into the first person. And I actually do have the knife in my right arm. And you can see that this is an actual view model because of the arm basically just sticking into the screen. Then we have the different stuff like the test pistol, which has a pullout animation. And I can actually just shoot. Then the test rifle. And I think the arms either have an animation or maybe connected with an I key constraint. And then there is a stick, the R6 gun and a riot shield. And here you can clearly see that it's also doing the animation while walking. If I zoom out, you can see that it's basically just keeping it still, but the view model either has a custom one or it's using my night walk. And same goes basically for all of the other tools. And this is me jumping with the riot shield. And let's also quickly check out the sway again. So basically this is just the sway on these tools. But now I'm just going to cover how to get the model. And it's going to be as simple as just pressing onto this link. That's going to take you to the Roblox Creator Hub. And I already own this item, but you just press on this button, which would say get model. And if I go into studio, and once I get the model, I should have it under my models in the inventory on the toolbox tab. And I do in fact have it right here. So I can just insert it, and this is going to be the model, where if I go to the folder, it's going to have the readme script and the easy first person local script as well. So if I go to the readme, you have the how to use section right here, which is telling you to place the local script, the easy first person one, into the starter player than the starter character scripts. So I can just do this. Then you can delete the readme and the model. So I can just remove the whole folder. So I'm just going to do a quick playtest and basically just go into first person. 
and I'm going to have my arms right here, as well as the camera effect. But now I'm just going to need some tools. And I just have this pickaxe, which I'm going to move into the starter pack. So now if I do a playtest, and just take the pickaxe out, then go to the first person, you can see that is actually going to work. Which is pretty awesome. And I gave this way basically the position of the arm while looking up or down, everything is just going to work. But then there was also another feature of this working in R6, where if I do yet another playtest, then just pull out the pickaxe and go into first person, it's actually just going to be fine. So again, shout out to the creator for actually making this, since it's pretty nice. And one thing that I just noticed with this is the pickaxe's shadow actually just being there. And that's because of the view model's arms basically having the cast shadow property disabled, but the pickaxe's isn't. And it's going to work fine if I'm outside of the first person, but once I go in, well, it's just going to be the shadow of the tool. But now thinking about it, I don't think it's going to be possible to actually make invisible parts cast a shadow. Because normally you'd have to make the whole body visible, otherwise it just would be the arms with the tool. So yeah. But also one more thing that I wanted to test would be basically having a wall and just seeing if the view model is going to basically just clip through it. Say so if I pull out the pickaxe and then walk, it actually well is. And one thing about this that I saw some time ago is changing the scale of the view model to be around 0.1. But that's just for a quick tip. And here I am in one of my different projects because I also wanted to check how this grid is going to work with for example tools like this. So if I just go to the first person, it's going to be kind of hard to see the axe or the right arm because of the animation being basically outside of the viewport. But once I attack, it's going to have the axe right here. So yeah, it's basically just presented like this. But let's actually see a different weapon. And it's going to be the starter sword right here. And the view bobbing basically just makes it as if you were to walk with a proper sword. Let me just attack right now. I'm not going to lie, it works a little bit worse than the animation from the first person view. But I also have another one that I wanted to present and it's going to be the sword, which the third person view is going to look like this. And the first person, well, I'm just going to present. And overall, the animation could be done a little bit better, but the effect is pretty much good enough. One thing about view models is that I don't really like how it's not having the same proportion of the animation when attacking. I'm mostly talking about the field attack, where you can see that the character is basically just swinging the whole sword to the right side. But the first person view just does a little slash. But yeah, that's basically just going to be everything for today. So again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page. But yeah, hope everyone had a nice day. Thank you for watching and see ya guys.